Hello, welcome to this week's module where we will explore the very early history of primate origins and evolution. It is finally time to look at some fossils. As we've already learned, fossils are the only direct evidence of what our primate ancestors used to look like. On this slide is the skull of a primate called Egyptopithecus. It was discovered in Egypt in sediments radiometrically dated to about 30 million years ago. Egyptopithecus is not quite a monkey and not quite an ape, but it has features that are found in both, such as a monkey-like tail and ape-like teeth. If you are curious about what the last common ancestor of you and a baboon look like, well, you are looking at it. In this lecture, I will go even farther back in time and look at the very first primates. We will also look at the descendants of Egyptopithecus, the very first apes. We will investigate many questions, including why did primates evolve? Who were the first primates? Who were the first higher primates, such as the anthropoids and the apes? And what evolutionary developments do we see along the way that help us link these past species with living ones? The very first primate fossil was discovered in France, seen on the map at the bottom left, and described by a scientist we've already met in a previous lecture, George Cuvier. Remember that Cuvier was one of the first to recognize that fossils were the remains of animals that were extinct, but that many of them were similar to mammals that still live today. Though Cuvier was quite brilliant, he actually got this primate fossil entirely wrong, identifying the small skull from France as an extinct small hoofed creature. But before we criticize Cuvier, keep in mind that he was studying the skull of a creature that no one had ever seen before. It was unlike anything in existence, and classifying it was rather quite difficult. Fortunately, Cuvier provided a thorough anatomical description of the specimen, setting the foundation for future descriptions that allow researchers all over the world to understand the anatomy of these fossils. And since the discovery of Oedipus, Literally tons of thousands of primate fossils have been unearthed in regions all over the world, giving us great insight into the evolutionary history of our own mammalian lineage. Notice on this map that fossil primates inhabited places now occupied only by the human primate, such as Europe and North America. The pattern of change we see in the fossil record and the sequence of anatomical adaptations that appear in these fossils allows us to try to figure out why primates exist in the first place. Primates today have a unique collection of skills and anatomies, as can be seen in the generic image of a primate at the upper right. Primates are very agile climbers with fine grasping ability in their hands and feet. They have nails instead of claws, relatively large brains, and stereoscopic vision, in other words, forward-facing eyes. Why did primates evolve this unique combination of skills? What was a selective advantage? For a long time, researchers suspected that primates evolved to fill the arboreal niche. They evolved adaptations to life in the trees. While this is true, Matt Cartmill, a Boston University anthropologist, argued in the 1970s that there are plenty of other tree-dwelling animals, squirrels for instance, who are not primates. There must be something in addition to arborality that sets primates apart. He argued that the earliest primates were arboreal hunters with forward-facing eyes, as predators often have, with fine grasping ability and nails to grab onto insects at the end of branches. The tarsier shown here at the bottom right is an example of what an early primate might have looked like in this evolutionary scenario. But almost all primates also eat fruit, and the forward-facing eyes may have benefited the earliest primates as they navigated quickly through the trees, looking for ripe fruit. This hypothesis, formulated by Robert Sussman, is the angiosperm radiation hypothesis and adds fruit into the mix. How do we know which idea is correct? It's because of fossils. Before we look at the very first primate fossils, let's quickly review what these fossils actually represent. As tempting as it is to see evolution as a progressive ladder and to put humans at the pinnacle, evolution simply does not work that way. 
We did not evolve from apes as they exist today, nor did the apes evolve from the monkeys as they are today. Instead, these living primates all share ancestors in the past. Over the course of time, these ancestors evolved specialized adaptations that permitted the survival of specific lineages. For example, look at the hands of various primates. The hand of the slow loris is not primitive. It is highly specialized, with a reduced first finger for increasing its grip. Other primates have long fingers to increase their grasp of tree limbs. Human fingers are short, and our lineage evolved a long thumb to permit a precision grip. The pattern by which these changes happen can be understood by studying the fossils of the ancestors of these primates. And of course, fossils set up an important test of evolution. If apes and monkeys share a common ancestor, then there should be fossils of creatures that are not quite apes and not quite monkeys, but have important features of both in the fossil record. You already were introduced to one of these at the very start of this uh, lecture, Aegyptopithecus, a primate with ape-like teeth but a monkey-like body. As we go back in time to the very first primates, we can see what adaptations they possess and whether these adaptations fit one or more of the hypotheses for why primates evolve. Notice that in the family tree presented here, we'll have to go back 60 to 65 million years to find fossils of the very first primates. Sure enough, the earliest fossils that appear to have something to do with the origin of primates are 60 million years old. They are from a very diverse and plentiful group of early Cenozoic mammals, known as Lesiodapiforms. Scientists have been finding fossils of these animals in Europe and even in western states like Wyoming for a long time. As you can see in this skull of a Plesiodapiform in the upper right, there are very few primate features present. The eye orbit is not surrounded by a bony rim, called a post-orbital bar. The eyes are on the side of the head and not as convergent or forward-facing as one finds in all modern primates. And the hands and feet often have limited or no grasping ability and often have claws instead of nails. Plesiodapiforms also have a relatively small brain and quite specialized, sometimes rodent-like teeth. So why are these considered primates? Well, many researchers don't think they actually are primates, but a sister group to primates called proprimates. The reasoning is that there are some species of plesiodapiforms that, while never possessing all of the features of modern primates, begin to evolve some of them. One such plesiodapiform is called Carpolestes. Carpolestes was discovered in Wyoming sediments dating to about 58 million years ago. It is a plesiodapiform, but unlike many other proprimates, this one has some of the features we find in modern primates. It has a grasping foot and a single nail on its big toe, but there are claws on the other digits. And the eyes of Carpolestes are on the sides of its head, not forward facing, as in primates. This is a good example of what an animal that is transitioning between a peril primate and a true primate, or a euprimate, might look like. Why did an animal like Carpolestes evolve? Reconstructions of the environment at this time reveal that the planet was a much, much warmer place during the Paleocene, in that Wyoming was covered with lush tropical rainforest with many fruiting trees. Perhaps the transitional primates like this one originally filled a niche of fruit eating on the ends of branches, but then some of them evolved the forward-facing eyes to hunt insects in this particular environment, making both the angiosperm radiation hypothesis and the visual predation hypothesis relevant to the understanding of primate origin. By the Eocene, 34 to 56 million years ago, the fossil record is littered with over 200 different species of actual true primates called euprimates. How do we know they are primates? They have grasping hands and feet with nails instead of claws. They have larger brains and more generalized teeth than the plesiodapiforms and they have forward-facing eyes surrounded by bone, a post-orbital bar. Some of these fossils are from animals as large as house cats and others are as small as chipmunks. They are found in fossil deposits in Western Europe, North America, Africa, and Asia, and generally fall into two categories, adapids and omeids. 
Adapids tend to be the larger of the two, and they were quite active during the daytime, or in other words, diurnal. They display high levels of sexual dimorphism, which is a feature found in later anthropoids. They also lack the tooth comb found in later proscenians, though they strongly resemble lemurs in many other ways, leading some to suggest that they are in fact ancestral to lemurs and other stepsirines. The Amiads are smaller and have large eyes, indicating they were most likely nocturnal. They had a relatively short snout and resembled modern tarsiers in many ways. Because tarsiers are more closely related to anthropoids than they are to lemurs, some researchers regard Amiads as ancestral to anthropoids, including humans. However, the relationship with these two primate groups to modern taxa is hotly debated. A very recent discovery has further complicated the primate fossil record. Artisibus is a remarkably well-preserved skeleton of a very small primate that lived in China 55 million years ago. It has an interesting combination of features found today in both tarsiers and anthropoids, suggesting that Artisibus may be one of the earliest haplorines. This tiny primate had small eyes but sharp cusp teeth, indicating that it hunted for insects during the day. It was arboreal, with monkey-like adaptations in the foot for climbing along the tops of branches. A fossil of this age in this location is evidence that the haplorine lineage evolved in Asia. By the end of the Eocene, some primates began to look more and more like anthropoids. Shown here is the very small primate from 42 million year old deposits in China called Eosimias, the dawn monkey. Why would this tiny little primate be ancestral to all anthropoids, including humans? First, its teeth are quite anthropoid-like, especially the size and shape of the canine tooth. Second, as can be seen in the lower left image, Eosimias has a short anthropoid-like heel, which suggests that it is climbing through the trees in a monkey-like way and not leaping as many strepsorines and tarsiers do. So, does this mean that anthropoids also originated in Asia? It is looking more and more that this may be the case. The bottom right image is a set of 37 million year old teeth from Egypt, representing a basal anthropoid called Britia, one of the very earliest to be found in Africa. New primate fossils from Minimar and from Libya look so much alike that the hypothesis that anthropoids originated in Asia and then migrated to Africa is gaining support. Anthropoids diversified and flourished in a changing environment. The Oligocene 23 to 34 million years ago was a period of global cooling in which new habitats emerged. One of these places was a lush tropical forest environment of the Fayum Depression in modern-day Egypt. Today, this region is a vast, inhospitable desert, as it can be seen in the image on the left. In the reconstruction to the right, the thousands of fossils found by a research team led by Elwyn Simons, a researcher from Duke University, indicate that the Fayum was once a lush forest environment inhabited by ancestral crocodiles, primates, birds, and large mammals. Researchers working in the Fayum have found fossils of three different kinds of anthropoid primates, oligopithecids, parapithecids, and proleopithecids. Oligopithecids are some of the oldest absolute anthropoids in the fossil record. They date to about 35 million years ago and include Catiopithecus. The slightly later parapithecids have a dental formula of 2133, which is found in modern-day platyrines or New World monkeys. This suggests that New World monkeys may actually have ancestry in the Old World. We will discuss this idea more in a moment. Fossil anthropoids in Fayum sediments between 29 and 32 million years old are often attributed to the Propleopithecids. These include the genera Propleopithecus and a primate you have already been introduced to, Egyptopithecus. Many of these Fayum primates have low round cusp on their cheek teeth, indicating that they lived on a diet of fruit and seeds. By 32 million years ago, the anthropoids had split into two groups, platyrines and catarines. The platyrines are currently represented only by the New World monkeys of South and Central America. The catarines are the Old World monkeys and the apes, including humans. 
As we learned in a previous lecture, cations can be identified by their 2123 dental formula and some other features of their skull and skeleton. Egyptopithecus, shown reconstructed in the upper right image, also has a 2123 dental formula, but it does not have a, a suite of features that would align it with other monkeys or apes. Though the teeth are ape-like, the limb proportions are monkey-like. In other words, the legs and arms are about the same length, suggesting it moved on the tops of branches the way a monkey does. Egyptopithecus also had a tail, which apes do not have. A recent discovery in Saudi Arabia pushes the date of the last common ancestor between Old World monkeys and apes to about 28 million years ago. Sardinius is represented by a skull found by a University of Michigan paleontologist. It is larger than Egyptopithecus and has slightly more advanced catarine features, including a bony auditory tube, which is found in all catarines, including humans, but not in Egyptopithecus. Soon after Sardinius, the ancestral catarines split into apes and Old World monkeys. New fossils from Tanzania indicate that the very earliest Old World monkeys and the very earliest apes had evolved by 25 million years ago. Before we look at these lineages, let's go back and consider the ancestry of the New World monkeys, the platyrines. Platyrines live only in the Americas, and South and Central America are a long, long way from Africa. So how did these New World monkeys get to the New World? Shown here are four hypotheses that explain the origins of the New World monkeys. The first is that the platyrines evolved from a North American anthropoid. Remember that North America was home to the plesiodapiforms and new primates. So perhaps these early primates evolved into an anthropoid type primate in North America and migrated into Central and South America. The problem with this hypothesis is that a North American anthropoid has never been found. A second and third hypothesis posit that an African anthropoid migrated to South America. There is a strong possibility that the platyrines rafted across the Atlantic on mats of vegetation and perhaps from island chain to island chain to the shores of South America, as shown in the upper right map. Given the similarity of other fossil animals, such as rodents, in West Africa and Eastern South America, this hypothesis has strong support. A variant of this idea is more of a land migration from South Africa to the southern tip of South America via Antarctica, which was not nearly as cold in the early Oligocene as it is now. The final hypothesis posits that the platyrines and catarines independently evolved from different prosimian lineages. This is highly unlikely, uh, given the strong similarities between them and DNA evidence linking them to a common ancestor that lived only 35 million years ago. How do we test these different hypotheses? We rely on part on fossils. As we just discussed, the Egyptian parapithecids from the Oligocene have a 2133 dental formula and are likely candidates for the ancestors of platyrines. But of course, they lived in Africa, not South America. There is a fossil shown here on the left from Bolivia that is 26 million years old from a platyrine primate called Brancilla. It too has a 2133 dental formula and is very similar in many ways to today's owl monkey, linking African fossils to modern South American primates. Furthermore, the link between Old World catarines and No World platyrines can be found simply by comparing their anatomy. Look closely at the image on the right. The monkey on the left is from the Old World, the one on the right from the New World. Comparing their anatomy and their DNA supports the idea that these lineages are closely related and share recent ancestry, and that the colonization of the New World was most likely from an African anthropoid migrating on mats of vegetation across the Atlantic. Not deliberately, of course. At the beginning of the Miocene, the planet once again warmed, creating new and expanding forest habitat for the Catarines. By about 23 million years ago, the Catarines diverged into two lineages, the hominoids, or apes, and the Cercopithecoids, or Old World monkeys. Because we are part of the hominoid lineage, we'll focus on that part of the primate family tree. The earliest apes are called proconsulids.
They were plentiful in a range of different habitats in Africa in the early Miocene and have been discovered at fossil sites mostly in Kenya and Uganda. See the map at the bottom right. Shown here is a very famous skull of proconsul discovered by Mary Leakey in 1948. Subsequent to this discovery, scientists have found nearly complete skeletons of proconsul, permitting detailed reconstructions of the 16th ape. Interestingly, these early apes were a bit different from apes today. From the neck up, they were quite ape-like. They had large, flat molars adapted for fruit eating, and these molars had a Y5 cusp pattern. They were also sexually dimorphic and had honing or shearing canines. However, their brains were rather small and more monkey-like relative to their body size. Like modern apes, though, they lacked a tail. Other than the absence of the tail, the proconsulids were very monkey-like from the neck down. They walked on all fours, both in trees and on the ground. They possessed less mobility at the wrist, shoulder, and elbow than what is found in modern apes. Their hands were quite a bit smaller than ape hands. Their arms were relatively shorter, and their ribcage was deep, like a monkey's ribcage. Modern apes have huge hands, long arms, and a shallow but wide ribcage. If Proconsul is an ancestral ape, then the modern ape body evolved later in the Miocene. Let's now look at the very first apes to migrate off the African continent. The story of ape evolution up to this point is restricted to Africa. Even the earliest catarines, such as Agitopithecus and Satidinius, are found in or very close to Africa. The earliest hominoids, proconsulids, are all found in Africa. But around 17 million years ago, the African hominoids expanded their territories into Eurasia. By 15 million years ago, African hominoids became very rare, and fossil hominoids instead became plentiful in Spain, France, Greece, Turkey, and Hungary. Of course, this change was being driven by the ecology. During the Middle Miocene, Southern Europe became covered in dense forest with fruit-bearing trees, the perfect habitat for early apes. The collection of different hominoids that inhabited Europe at this time are called dryopithecids, although this encompasses many different kinds of apes, Dryopithecus, Hispaniopithecus, Praeolapithecus, Rudopithecus, Araniopithecus, and by the end of the Miocene, Araupithecus. Like the proconsulids, the Dryopithecids have large honing canines and a Y5 pattern on their molar teeth. Look, for instance, at the dental similarities between this mandal of Dryopithecus on the upper left and a modern gorilla upper right. However, unlike the proconsulids, the Dryopithecids evolved more ape-like postcrania that allowed them to engage in more arm swinging and suspensory behaviors in the trees. In fact, by the end of the Miocene, the ape Oreopithecus, as shown in the jaw in the bottom right image, found in modern day Tuscany, was highly suspensory. This ape had very specialized teeth. It may have even belonged to its own unique grouping of apes, the Oreopithecids. The Dryopithecids have long arms and large hands. In addition, they evolved larger brains than their proconsulids, foreshadowing the intelligence we see in modern great apes. The great forests of southern Europe receded by the end of the Miocene, and this climate shift led to the extinction of these European great apes. We'll come back to them in just a moment. As the apes expanded out of Africa, Many of them migrated to the west and evolved into the Dryopithecids. However, others migrated to the east and evolved into a different groups of apes called the Shivapithecids. The Shivapithecids are found mostly in India and Pakistan, although one genus, Ankarapithecus, is from Turkey. Unlike Dryopithecids and unlike modern African apes, the Shivapithecids had thick enamel, which was useful for eating hard objects like nuts and seeds. When first discovered, Shivapithecus was thought to be an orangutan ancestor. As can be seen in the top right image, the profile of the skull is remarkably like that of a modern orangutan on the right, and unlike that of an African ape on the left. However, fossils from the below the neck indicate that Shivapithecus was not like an orangutan in terms of its locomotion, 
and was much more like a proconsulate. You may say that this is fine, and that it took time for orangutans to evolve their postcranial anatomy that allows them to be such acrobatic, suspensory climbers. However, if this is true, then orangutans and the African apes must have independently evolved their upright suspensory abilities from a last common ancestor that was more like a monkey or proconsulate. The alternative explanation is that Shiva Pithecus is not an ancestral orangutan, and that the shared similarities in the skull evolved in parallel, perhaps because of similar diets. Recent discoveries of more orangutan-like creatures called Corathopithecus may support this latter hypothesis. Regardless, by the Pliopleistocene, one of the most unusual and amazing primates ever discovered had evolved in Asia. It is called Gigantopithecus, and though rare and known only through teeth and jaws, it was enormous, estimated to have weighed upward of 500 pounds, and surviving as shown here on a diet of bamboo. It lived until quite recently and probably overlapped in time with some of her own ancestors, Homo erectus, in Asia. Humans are most closely related to chimpanzee, bonobos, and gorillas, apes that currently live in Africa. It is important then that we understand the origins of the African apes. Molecular dating suggests that the last common ancestor of the African apes lived sometime between 6 and 12 million years ago. However, the African fossil record becomes extremely scanty in the late Miocene, when hominoid fossils are more plentiful in Europe and Asia. There are two possible explanations for this. The first is that hominoids have always been in Africa, and that a poor fossil record is all that is keeping us from understanding this aspect of ape evolution. The alternative hypothesis is that apes expanded beyond and fully out of Africa, and that the European dryopithecids are, in fact, the ancestors of the African apes. During the late Miocene, the planet cooled and dried, and the great Eurasian forest receded back to equatorial Africa. Even in Africa, the vast forest became patchier, surrounded by woodlands and even grasslands. As can be seen in the image at the right, one of the European apes, Oranopithecus, left, bears many similarities to modern African apes, suggesting a degree of relatedness. However, the hypothesis that African apes came from Europe has been dealt several recent blows. New fossil discoveries in Kenya, look at the Nacolopithecus at the right in this image, and Ethiopia, Shoropithecus, suggest that the ancestors of African apes were indeed living in Africa, though they may have had cousins living in Europe. We'll see which of these hypotheses is correct as more and more fossil discoveries both inside and outside Africa are reported. It is time again to review. We'll do this in two ways, starting with a map of the old world. At the very top are localities where Miocene apes have been discovered. The proconsulids are found in East Africa. Many types of dryopithecids are found in Europe, and the Shivapithecus are found in Asia. The maps below show how apes may have migrated through the Miocene. By 17 million years ago, African apes migrated north through Arabia and into Europe. Central European apes eventually migrated through the vast forests that spread easterly in Asia, and by 13.5 million years ago, there are no fossil apes in Africa that we know of, and apes in Europe and Asia. Roughly 10 million years ago, the apes migrated out of Europe and Central Asia and inhabited Southeast Asia and Africa. Shora Pithecus, for instance, is an Ethiopian ape that is around 10 million years old and resembles modern gorillas. Now, let's review not just the geography of these fossil locations, but the anatomy of the fossils themselves. The very first hominoids, or apes, appear in the fossil record in the early Miocene, about 20 million years ago. These proconsulids are found exclusively in Africa, particularly in Kenya and Uganda. From the neck up, they are quite ape-like, but from the neck down, they are monkey-like, except they did not have a tail. By the middle to late Miocene, 9 to 14 million years ago, apes expanded out of Africa and inhabited the forests of southern Europe and Asia. 
European apes, called dryopithecids, are more ape-like in their limbs and hands, indicating that they had evolved suspensory, arm-swinging behaviors like those found in modern apes. Some of the latest European apes are the Oreopithecids, which were highly capable of suspensory locomotion and had specialized teeth for eating leaves. The Asian apes, called Shivapithecids, resembled orangutans from the neck up, but proconsulids from the neck down. We have discussed many species of fossil ape, but there are even more that we did not mention. In fact, many scientists have discovered and named over 75 different species of fossil ape from the Miocene. It truly was a planet of the apes, with many different experiments in how to be an ape going on in Africa and Eurasia. What is surprising to many is that while apes were plentiful and successful, monkeys were not. Monkey fossils were exceptionally rare in the Miocene, and are known only from the middle Miocene fossil Victoriopithecus and a few others. However, as apes became rarer and rarer in the late Miocene, monkeys became more and more common until monkeys dominate the African and Asian primate fossil record of the Pliocene and Pleistocene, and apes are almost entirely absent. Some monkeys became quite large, like Theropithecus, a genus of monkey found across South and East Asia. This large monkey is shown on this slide. The interesting reversal in ape and monkey fossil frequency was driven by climate change. A drying and cooling of the planet caused the great forest to recede, creating habitats suitable for monkeys, but less conductive to the survival of the large, arboreal, fruit-eating apes. Let's put it all together now. Though it is unclear precisely how many of these extinct catarines are directly ancestral to the modern old world monkeys and apes, this diagram gives a ballpark picture of catarine evolution. To the far right are the living catarines, split into the two groups of old world monkeys, columbines and sarcopithecines, and the two groups of hominoids, lesser apes, gibbons, and great apes. Across the bottom is a timeline running from 35 million years ago to today. Notice the place of many of the different fossil catarines we discussed. First, Egyptopithecus living prior to the split between monkeys and apes. Second, Pocounsel, Shivapithecus, Aranopithecus, and Oreopithecus, among others, occupying different branches of the ape family tree. Third, as monkeys became more numerous and diverse into the Pliocene, Apes became less and less diverse, surviving only in refuges of rainforests in Southeast Asia and in equatorial Africa. However, there was one ape that adapted quite well to the fragmented forest, woodlands, and eventual grasslands of the African savanna, an ape that began walking on two legs, our own ancestors, the first hominins. We'll explore the very earliest members of our own hominin lineage in the next module.